Hello and welcome to Transcribe.me's latest transcriber training. In this video, we're going to take a look at the transcription page on the new interface. If you've been with Transcribe.me for a long time, you'll notice that the new interface looks quite different from the old one. We're going to log in here. When you log in, you are brought to your WorkHub dashboard. We have an exams tab, the transcription tab, a QA tab, if you're a QA. If you're not a QA, you won't see this. The amount of pay that you have accumulated from your work. A link to the Transcribe Me library. And the little person where you can click on your account tab. You'll also see this purple chat bubble down here in the corner. This is your link to the help desk. Anytime you have a question, you can click on this purple chat bubble and send a message to the help desk directly from the WorkHub environment without going to another page. We have another video explaining this and I'll link it in the description box below. So one of the things you see when you come to your WorkHub dashboard is this work progress box. It tells you how many hours of work that you've submitted in your time at TranscribeMe, gives you your current level, and then the levels that are to come. These levels don't really mean anything. They're just kind of fun and give you an idea of how much work you've done since you started working for TranscribeMe. On your interface settings, you can choose your language. And now, new to the WorkHub interface, you can change your theme, light or dark. Many people prefer working with dark theme because it's a little easier on the eyes. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Another thing that's new on the new WorkHub is that you can now edit and update your snippets without being in a dog. A snippet is a small piece of text that you can type into your job that will expand once you've hit the spacebar. These snippets can vastly improve your typing time because in this case, you can type BRB three keystrokes instead of all of these keystrokes. It may not seem like much, but in a full day of work, that keystroke saving can really add up not only in time, but in wear and tear on your hands. At the bare minimum, it's a good idea to have snippets for your tags because a misspelled or incorrect tag is an automatic rejection by the QA. If you have a snippet, you'll never misspell that inaudible by mixing up the I and B. If you do a search on Yammer, you'll find many posts that have to do with common snippets that people use. It's probably not a good idea to add a whole bunch at one time because you won't remember what you've added. Add a few, get used to using them, and then add a few more. Before you know it, you'll have a library of snippets that make sense to you and that improve your productivity. Also from here, you can see that you can go to your profile, you can change your password, view your work history, view your review history, check on your payment history, set up hotkeys, and invite friends. We'll click on the hotkeys. There are some hotkeys built into the system. If you don't remember them, you can look here. If you don't have a foot pad, you're going to want to know these hotkeys for controlling the audio player while you're typing. If you don't wish to use the hotkeys that are set up, you can change them. Click the Save button, and your new settings will take effect. If you want to reset them, just click this button right here. All right, back to the WorkHub dashboard. We've talked about managing hotkeys. The other new information that you'll receive on this new WorkHub interface is your transcription info. It will give you the date of your last job and the ID of that job. This ID is very important if you have a question about this job that you need to contact the help desk about. If you copy the two little papers here, it'll copy it to your clipboard so that you can then include it in your message to the help desk. If you have an accidentally submitted job, or a job that you notice an error in that you want back, you're going to need this number for the help desk to find that job and get it back to you. So now let's say that we're ready to get to work. We're gonna click on the transcription link here at the top, which will open the jobs interface. On this page, at the top, you see the audio player. We have a play fast forward and rewind that you can use by clicking it with your mouse or control with the hotkeys. You'll see the length of the audio and where you are in the audio. You can change your playback speed by sliding along the controller faster or slower. 
you can change your volume. Sometimes with difficult audio, it can be helpful to lower the audio on the hub and raise the audio on your computer. I don't know why this works, but it often does. And then you can change the settings. You can loop the audio. When it gets to the end, it will automatically start playing. Or you can turn that off. If you have a foot pedal that's connected, it will show here that it is connected. I'm going to plug in my foot pedal so you can see what that notification looks like. And you can see that it turns to an orange connected. And the three lines right here also turn orange. So when you're looking at the page, you can tell right away if your foot pedal is active or not. Something else that's new and incredibly helpful is this highlight selected. OK, let's say I'm listening to an audio and I have typed this sentence, but I can't quite make out what happens next. So I put in an inaudible tag, but I want to make sure that I come back later and listen again to clear that up. So I can highlight it, and then I know when I look back through that I have something I need to check. If I've checked it and fixed it, I can get rid of the highlight and move on. With the magnifying glass, I can search for a term and then replace it. Let's say that I put transcribe me's name in without capitalizing the M. And then I go and I do a Google search and I find out that they actually capitalized that M. Well, I may have used transcribe me 10 times in my section, depending on how many times it was mentioned. And I don't want to have to go through and find every instance of that. So I can use the find and replace and it will fix all of those instances for me. This can be really helpful when you've done some research and found a particular spelling of a name of a company or a person. When we're done transcribing, we can hit this orange submit button. The file will be submitted and a new one will start playing so that we can keep working. However, if we're not ready to continue working, we can click on the three dots right here and select submit and exit instead. Let's say that I've started transcribing this file and it's turned out to be way more than I can handle and I don't want to complete it. I can click cancel and it will take me out of the file. Anything I've typed, if I've been working at least two minutes, is going to be saved and the next transcriber that pulls this file up will see my work. If I'm unsure of what I've typed, I may want to delete it prior to, to canceling so that the next transcriber will have a fresh slate to start from. However, if I want to give them a head start, I can leave that information there. Just remember that if you pull up a file that has text already in it, you're free to continue working on that file. But you will want to check what's there because any work you submit will be attributed to you and not the transcriber who had the file previously. Other information that you'll find on this page Again, you see the job ID number, which is something that you will need to include if you communicate with the help desk about this file. There's an easy copy to clipboard button right here. Just clip it and you see that it's been copied. Here you'll see the style guide. Because I'm a member of TME, I have access to this type of a file. If you're a general transcriber, you may see rush here. That means that it is a rush file, but do not rush through the file just to get it finished. You still have the same 60 minutes per minute of audio to complete that file that you have for any other file. That rush designation is more for the QA and their extension guidelines than it is for the TR. This here tells me that I am not to input any speaker IDs or timestamps into this file. Generally, as a TR, you will not have that responsibility that belongs to the QA. Again, I can manage my snippets my hotkeys, or my settings from this page. If I click on Style Guide, it will expand. You must check this Style Guide for every file that you pull up because styles can change, and it is up to you to know how you're to transcribe this. It will tell you what language to use, if it should be done using clean verbatim or full verbatim, and what that means. It will give you all of the information that you need to complete this file in the way that the client has ordered it. Clicking on the expandable caret here will give you more information for each of these categories. If there's anything that you're not sure of, you can always 
check with the help desk to clear it up. I am not actually going to transcribe this audio, so I'm going to cancel. In order to prevent accidentally submitted jobs, you get a box asking if you're sure, and you can say OK. This will then return you to your WorkHub dashboard. Editing Tina here. I realized that I forgot to include some important information, so I'm going to just put it in here at the end. If you click on the transcription tab, and there aren't any jobs available for you to do, you will see this waiting for work message and the spinning purple circle. Transcribe Me has built the auto refresh function into the work hub so you no longer need an external Chrome extension in order to refresh the page automatically. If you leave your computer speakers turned on, you can go ahead and go do something else or work on another tab and when you hear the sound coming from your computer, you'll know that you've gotten a job and can go work on it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you. See you in the next video.